Hey, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of The Courtship Code. We are in season two, episode two for season two of The Courtship Code, brought to you by Black Muslim Single Society and hosted by me, Zara J. I'm so excited to meet with you guys. You know, this is another week in to our uh, masculinity and femininity season. Uh, if you missed the first episode, I highly suggest that you go back and listen to that. The first episode was about who's leading the courtship. We just kind of talked about, you know, being able to identify if it's the masculine or the feminine energy, the man or the woman who is leading that relationship and how to rectify that matter. But this week, uh, we're going to dive into some masculinity basics. So that's what this week's episode is going to be about. As I said, this whole entire season, 15 episodes will all be about masculinity and femininity. It's a topic that I'm really passionate about. It's something that I really enjoy uh, discussing. And we also go over a lot of this with our matchmaking clients. It's always something that comes up when it comes to matchmaking. And, you know, I hope that she's listening to this right now. I was so happy to find out that uh, one of the longstanding members for matchmaking for Black Muslim Single Society that I absolutely love. I love her, love her, love her to death. Um, really excited. She told me that she was getting married. Inshallah, she'll be getting married very soon. So congratulations, hand clap for that. But um, one of the things that I loved, I loved, loved, loved that she mentioned was that she really um, clicks with his masculinity. And I asked her, you know, does he make you feel confident in your femininity? And she said, yes. And that that's so special and so unique because on our journey together, the topic of not only a man's masculinity or masculine energy, but even some of her own masculine energy and how to channel and hold that back and what that looks like and how to identify if someone is right for you based upon the energy that they place you in and how you respond, the type of energy that you respond to them. So super excited for her, inshallah. So do us, please, for our sister. Uh, I don't, I want to say her name, but I have to ask permission <laughs> before I just expose her, but a wonderful sister. And I'm, I'm super excited for her. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to be diving into this because it's something that I, I love so much discussing. Like I said, with, with our match clients, definitely always have to bring up the topic of masculine and feminine energy because it's so complicated in the society to maintain a certain energy and to get just really centered within yourself. But I'm telling you, when you are confident in either your masculine or your feminine energy, you just move differently, you respond differently, and you engage differently with the opposite sex. And you'll have more success, you'll feel so much better, and and you'll be really happy about the choices you make with the people that you align yourself with, not just in romantic relationships, but even in friendships and how you interact with family. It just shows up all the time. So I'm excited about this season. This is probably, this is only the second season of The Courtship Code, but I'm definitely excited, excited, excited for you guys. And thank you as always for all the wonderful responses. If you're listening on the Anchor app, make sure that you guys give us a round of applause and make sure that you also favorite this podcast so that you can get notifications and updates. If you are uh, following on our new YouTube channel, please, please, please comment, comment, share, like, do anything so we can try to grow that channel. We really appreciate you guys for listening. If you're listening on Spotify or uh, Google Podcasts or uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, thank you guys for listening. Make sure that you guys um, subscribe and follow our podcast on there as well. As always, we appreciate any emails, inboxes, DMs, posts that you share on Facebook or Instagram or videos and any of that content when you guys are sharing and letting people know, check out The Courtship Code. It's a podcast just for Muslim singles, just for courtship, um, and especially for Black Muslim singles. Definitely targets, but it's not limited, but it does definitely target that. And this is the only podcast that speaks specifically to the unmarried Muslim demographic about this. So thank you guys, as always, for listening, for sharing, for commenting, for talking about it, um, and for being a part of our family. If you haven't already gone to the website, go to Black Muslim Single Society, book a consultation, enroll in matchmaking, get your profile in our system. We will be 
so thrilled to have you part of the family. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you guys so much. So as I said, episode two of season two, we are talking about the basics of masculinity. So this is not just for men. This is for women too. So make sure, sisters, make sure that you are tuned in and listening as well. Because you're going to be able to identify some of these characteristics within yourself and how this might be showing up and how this might be rubbing uh, the opposite sex wrong. And for men, you might be witnessing either that you have some of these characteristics or maybe you're lacking in some of these characteristics. So we're going to get into, I'm just going to break it down to five things, five key things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. You know, as always, we try to keep the podcast podcast very uh, condensed and straight to the point. And um, I hope you guys have your pen and paper and that you're listening. And like I said, always is always share, invite more people to listen. It helps to grow our family. Okay. So let's get ready to dive in. All right, guys, so masculinity basics. What does this look like in courtship? How to identify in courtship? And like I said, even how to identify in yourself? Because let's be real, right now in society, you know, the energy of men and women has been totally flipped upside down, right? It's very hard for a man to be fully in his masculine state at times. And it can also be times where it's hard for women to be fully in her feminine state. And not only that, but we're constantly changing, right? We're constantly having to shift from one energy to another in order to get things done, in order to adjust to the world around us. But what happens is sometimes is because of conditioning, because of environment, because of circumstance, sometimes we can embody energies or principles that aren't necessarily natural to us, but it can be a form of survival. It can be a form of being able to just learn how to adapt and maneuver to whatever environment that we're in. That could be work. It could be home. It could be social. It could be a lot of different things. So, you know, when we say that, or when we say, when we speak about women, Uh, embodying some masculine traits, right? You can be a very feminine looking woman, right? But how you move through life, how you engage, how you respond, um, not necessarily reply, but how you respond might be in a masculine energized way. So we're just going to talk about that. Like I said, we're going to break it down in five different ways. And for the fellas, we're going to talk about this as well, because it's not always that men are totally embodying their masculinity. And that's not a jab. That's not an attack or anything. My brothers, trust me, I'm speaking to you from a place of love and care. I love you guys so much. I love men. (laughs) I love men. So, (laughs) you know, I'm speaking to you from a place of love and care. So everything's about education and information so that we can just be better, so that we can engage with one another from a better place. So we can just grow, not only as Muslims, but just grow as human beings, you know, it's, it's so important. So, you know, the first thing that I want you guys to understand is that masculine energy, like I said, it exists in both men and women, right? It's not that all men are totally masculine and women are totally feminine. No, that's not how things work, right? You have the yin and the yang. You have that duality, right? And here's something really interesting. I remember when I was at the masjid, this was some months ago, maybe even, oof, this might have been over a year ago. Um, and I sat in a class and uh, the Imam, Imam Latif down in Jacksonville, he, uh, he he broke down the word individual. Here's something interesting you probably never even noticed, right? So Allah knows best. Allah is, is wonderful, like we, right? Wonderful Lord that we have. Um, so in the word individual, right, you have the word dual, right? Individual, dual, D-U-A-L, Right. And in every single thing that Allah has created is that duality, right? You have the good and the bad. You have the masculine and the feminine, right? He has created duality in everything. There's the light and the dark in everything that he has created. And that's really beautiful. And that's just another reminder. You know, there's the truthfulness in our religion. But also, um, that's just the reality that... Everyone embodies, right, masculine and feminine principles, right? We we have both of us in us. But based upon, um, you know, our gender, typically 
we default and lean more towards one energy than another. But like anything, sometimes things can be out of whack, right? Wires can go cross. Um, and, and we're not always operating or leaning more towards our nature and acting in our fitra, right? So when it comes to that duality, the way that it can show up in courtship, the way that it can show up in our relationships is if you're not mindful that opposites attract, opposites attract, right? So what do I mean by opposites attract? What I mean is that a masculine woman is going to attract a feminine man. A masculine man is going to attract a feminine woman, right? So I hope that I made sense with that. I know I kind of whispered that kind of quickly. It might have been over some of your heads. But let me let me explain that a little bit more. So a masculine woman, again, she might look very feminine on the outside. But let's say that woman is operating in her masculine energy. And we're going to break down some of those things in a second as I go through these other key principles for the basics. But If this woman is operating more in a masculine energy, right? She's more of that doer, the planner, the strategizer. She's leading the courtship as we spoke about in that last uh, episode of Courtship Code. Um, She's taking the reins. She's stirring the ship, right? Then she's kind of pushing that man into his feminine energy so that he's going to be more passive. He's going to go with her flow. He's going to be the one to kind of not really uh, be that leader in the relationship, right? Now, he himself might be a wonderful man. That's not taking anything away from him as a man at all. But because of the fact that she's operating more in the masculine energy, he's going to be operating more in his feminine energy. Or what will also happen is she will just totally repel masculine men, right? So if the woman is acting masculine, if she's in her masculine energy, she's either going to attract passive men, which is going to eventually make her exhausted, worn out. She's going to be really tired of feeling like she's the one making all the choices, doing all the work. She's the one leading the relationship, right? Or she's going to have a hard time attracting masculine men because the energies are going to constantly conflict. Two energies cannot operate in the same space at the same time. Now, if that man is a masculine man, right, he's going to naturally attract a feminine woman or he's going to recharge a feminine woman who is aware of her femininity, And it's important that, you know, that she's, like I said, she's aware of her femininity. So masculine man, he's doing, he's planning, he's strategizing. He's, he's, he's being fully in his masculinity, right? He's going to attract a woman that is going to be uh, a lot more feminine, a lot more passive, someone who's going to be a lot more cooperative, someone who's going to go along with his flow a lot more. She's going to identify and respond to his masculine energy by being feminine. She's not going to feel the need to charge up her masculine energy energy in his presence. However, that woman has to also either already be operating in her feminine energy or she has to at least be aware of her feminine energy because if he is fully masculine and she is not responding in a feminine way and she is still trying to respond to him in a masculine way it won't work she's going to lean too much into him and like I said opposites attract so she's not going to be able to attract him so identify within yourself, you know, do you tend to lean more towards your masculine or your feminine, whether you're a man or a woman, which energy do you tend to lean towards more and be honest with yourself because it's going to show up in your courtships It's going to show up as we went over that episode one, it's going to show up in who's leading the courtship It's going to show up for how you communicate, how you engage and how you interact with one another. It's never too late to turn it around. But once you turn it around, be aware that that might end up breaking off things because that other person may not be able to adjust and respond to that change. But hey, that might be what's best for you anyway, because ultimately everyone's going to want to be with someone who makes them feel charged in their natural energy. So if you get with someone 
and let's say you're a man and you're acting more in your passive state during the courtship and then you get into the marriage and you want to reclaim your masculinity it's going to cause some problems you know unless that woman is aware and ready to reclaim her femininity it might go haywire it might cause some issues same thing if you're a woman and you're acting in your masculine state during courtship and then you get married and now you want to fall back into the feminine state, but he's used to you doing everything and leading the way It's going to cause some problems. So it's very you know, important to identify this within yourself and see how can you turn those energy energies around? How can you balance it out and what do you need to do? And if you need any help with that, you know, be sure you can definitely email um, us over at contact at blackmuslimsinglesociety.com or go to the website. We can talk about um, assisting you with that in a coaching session or you being able to enroll in a course for that. And as always, like I said, we work with our matchmaking members one-on-one, our premium members one-on-one. And um, this is part of it, talking about this while they're engaging and going through introductions and learning more about how they can turn around their own courtships. So that's number one, understanding first and foremost that duality exists in everything and that uh, opposites attract. It's very important to identify that within yourself and with any other person. Number two, number two with masculinity basics, understanding that being masculine is about being assertive, direct, and decisive. Assertive, direct, and decisive. ADD, right? (laughs) So... A man or a woman who is operating in a masculine energy is going to be assertive. Now, as I said, duality exists in everything. So ladies, if you're listening to this, I don't want you to think that you being assertive is a bad thing. I don't want you to think that you being direct or decisive is a bad thing. Those are not bad things. And there are times where you have to tap into that energy. If you want to get anything done, if you want to accomplish any goal, if you want to achieve anything, you have to tap into your masculine energy. So I want you to know that those are not negative things. If you are an assertive woman, if you are direct, if you are decisive, that's not a bad thing. What I'm referring to or what we're trying to uh, teach you about here is how to tap out of it as a woman when it comes to courtship. You want to be assertive and and decisive and knowing, you know, who you want and what you want. But when it comes to pushing the relationship forward, you don't want to be assertive in that type of sense. You want to see, can he be an assertive man? Is he direct? Is he decisive? You know, if a man is kind of indecisive, he's constantly wavering, that's very unattractive in a woman, fellas. So if you are the type of man where you're constantly, I can't make a decision, I don't know, you know, I like her, but I don't like her, you know, I want to get married, but then I don't know, you're making up excuses, you're complaining, all of that is very unattractive to a woman. And it's going to turn her off. If you can't be direct, if you can't really say how you feel, say what you need. If you if you wait or you kind of tiptoe and dance around things, you're not really comfortable with addressing an issue or even addressing a need or even just addressing her, telling her exactly how you feel about her. Right. That's going to be a total turn off. Right. Women don't like that. Women like men who are like right that knight in shining armor, someone who's going to be direct, who's going to be decisive, who's going to be assertive. Right. Now, the assertion part is complicated because women sometimes ask, is it okay for a woman to approach a man? Is it okay for a woman to do certain things? And I don't think that those are necessarily bad things for a woman to uh, show initiative or to show interest. I'm not going to say initiative. I don't think it's a bad thing for a woman to show interest in a man, you know, and however it is that she shows interest, but you have to be able to show interest and lean back. It's like you kept, you, you catch, you pass the ball and then you fall back in line, right? Or you, I guess maybe you catch the ball, then you pass the ball. Yeah. It's more so like that. Catch the ball, then you pass the ball, right? You don't hold on to that ball and like, Oh, I'm about to slam dunk it. I'm about to go for the shot. No, pass the ball. Right. (laughs) So let him take that ball from there. But if you're still trying to hold on to the ball, still trying to stir things, you're doing all the calling, all the texting, all the, no, you need to just like let him show up more. Right. You got to let him show up more. Let him be more assertive. So, fellas, it's important. I know, I know, I know that men are not as confident 
as we want them to be or we want to make them out to be, right? Men have insecurities. Men second guess themselves. Men, you know, are worried about rejection. Like it's not that simple, ladies. So sometimes we expect men to be like these superhuman beings without feelings and emotions and it's not that easy. So sometimes it's hard for a man to be assertive cuz cuz he has his own insecurities. He has his own feelings. He has his own issues from the past experiences that he might be dealing dealing with or or scared to navigate right but fellas um you know you, you have to tap in to that masculinity and and be assertive about what it is that you want and almost unapologetically about it right you don't want to be rude you don't want to be a jerk you don't want to be a player you don't want to be anything that's just a bad character but definitely be assertive in whatever it is that you want and just don't be afraid to go for it we want you to go for it we support you in your assertiveness like it's attractive it's appealing and it's something that women truly desire and i'm gonna tell you something you know if you want to keep that woman engaged You want to keep a woman interested in you as a man, whether you are single or even if you're married, you could be married for a long time, right? Relationships go up and down. Sometimes women lose attractive. You have to hold on to that masculine energy if you want, if you want that woman to remain super attracted to you, you know, you're going to have to hold on to that. So number three, the next thing which goes right behind that is being action oriented, being action oriented and being solution oriented. So, so, so important to be solution oriented. Men are fixers, right? That masculine energy wants to fix. It wants to give. It wants to problem solve. It it wants to take action. It wants to push forward. It's in the doer role, right? So when a man is in his finest solution, I'm going to take care of things. I'm going to provide I'm going to protect. I'm going to move things forward. I'm going to just whatever, (laughs) you know, everything that has to being has to do with being on go, going green, right? Super attractive in a man. He is totally in his masculine state when he is being action oriented. He's taking care of things. And when he's protecting, when he's providing, when he's doing, when he's giving, right? He's being solution oriented and not problem oriented, right? That is so attractive in a woman. I mean, so attractive to a woman. I'm sorry. So attractive to a woman. And that woman's going to want to get down with his plan. When when men say things like, you know, I want a woman that's going to cooperate. Or I want a woman that's going to support me. Or I want a woman that's going to, uh, you know, go, go with my flow. Well, you have to have a flow going. You can't have a stagnant flow, right? You can't be flowing all over the place. You can't be flowing backwards, right? So... You have to be solution oriented. You have to be action oriented. You have to have a plan. You have to have a big goal and a vision in mind. I always say, you know, it's so important for a man to have something that he's striving for. When you have a vision in mind, you have a path that you're trying to get down, even if it's just when it comes to marriage, right? When you are being action oriented towards marriage, you're making progress, you're taking steps, you're doing things to progress the relationship forward. You're not waiting for her to do it. You're not waiting for her to plan a date. You're not waiting for her to ask you, what are we doing? Where is this relationship going, right? You are taking the lead. That is super attractive to a woman. And a woman who is in her feminine state and a woman who really trusts your vision, she's going to want to get down. She's going to want to get down with whatever you got going on. So it's super important for that man to be action oriented. Now, if you're the woman And you're the one constantly being solution oriented, constantly trying to fix his problems, constantly trying to solve his issues, constantly trying to direct him in where to go, direct him to the through the courtship. Right. It's not going to work. Either you're going to turn him off or you're going to exhaust yourself because you're going to feel like, why am I the one doing all the work? Why am I the one leading this relationship? Why am I trying to fix him? Why am I trying to solve him? But that means that you need to tap out of your masculine energy and allow him to figure it out for himself. And if he doesn't, that's okay. You don't have to be with him. And if he does try to figure it out and he makes a mistake, that's okay too, because men are human beings. 
right? They're going to make mistakes. They're going to mess up along the way, but you have to allow him to make his own mistakes. You know, it's just like a mother with her son, you know, it can be really, really hard because you love them so much and you want to hold them close and you want to protect them. And you just want to be mama bear or mama bird or whatever, right? You don't want to kick them out the nest. You don't want to kick them out the cave, but he's going to love you and respect you so much more if you allow him to make his own mistakes and you're there to comfort and nurture him when he comes to you in that vulnerable state, admitting to his wrongs, admitting it was a mistake and you not judge him or chastise or, or, or make him feel bad about it, you know, but you have to allow him to figure it out for himself. And that'll take some of the stress off of you for trying to figure it out for him. That's not saying don't be supportive. That's not saying if he asks for help or he needs some suggestions that you don't give it. And that's also not saying to the men to never come to her for suggestions or for help, right? Because we can all help each other. But there are some things and some decisions that you're going to have to do on your own. And it's really supportive of that woman if she allows him to go through it and allows him to figure it out right you you don't want to raise a man but at the same time you have to stop trying to raise him so make sure that that man is action oriented and you as a man make sure that you are being action oriented during the courtship number four is confidence confidence fellas you have to be confident you have to know that you are capable, that you are strong, right? That Allah gave you a purpose. Allah made you strong, right? You came here for a reason. You survived out of millions of sperm. We're just putting it quite frankly. <laughs> so, right, you are special, my friend. You are very special. So you have to walk this earth with your head high and your chest out. And you have to be confident because women sense confidence women can smell it on a man and women are so attractive and they are so attracted to and just adore confident men right but when you lack confidence that is a signal to a woman that she can't fully trust you she can't fully trust you even if she wants to even if she trusts you in other areas if she's sensing a lack of confidence in you it's going to be kind of hard to trust you. Now, why is that? Because if you don't trust yourself, how can I trust you? Right? If you don't trust yourself, how can I trust you? I mean, if you were in an army, right? Because essentially, right, as the man, you want you want to be the lieutenant, right? Or the sergeant. I don't know. I'm the, I don't know the army terms, but we're just going to say sergeant. Because <laughs> I know that's a higher up, at least. So you want to be the sergeant, Right? <laughs> of your cavalry, right? So I guess that's the right word too. I don't know. Bear with me. Don't judge me. So uh, you want to be the sergeant of this army, right? Now imagine if if you're a part of an army and the, the troops are like, you know, so what's the next move? And you're like, well, you know, I want to lead you guys to victory, but you know... I'm also concerned about the fact that, you know, a couple months ago or a couple years ago when I tried to lead somebody to victory, you know, it didn't work out. And, you know, I really, I was really messed up after that. I had to go to counseling and, you know, it wasn't, I, I, I thought that I was ready to lead them to victory, but I wasn't. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if I can lead you guys to victory this time. I know, I hope so, but I don't, come on. Who is going to want to fight behind that person? Like, oh no, this, he don't know what he doing. Like, oh no, we need to find a new leader. <laughs> this is not, I'm not about to get shot for somebody who's not sure if we're going to be able to survive or not. Right. So you have to have that blind faith in whatever it is that you're doing. Now, not in an arrogant type of way where you're just out here just making stupid mistakes and you're not using good character, good judgment. You know, I'm hoping that the woman that chooses you believes that you have good character and good judgment. But I mean, you have to be confident because it's something that a woman will be able to pick up on. Now, 
how do you become confident as a man or how how can you increase this right because this is something everyone struggles with confidence everyone has insecurities there are moments of weakness right you're not always sure of your decisions but one of the best ways to increase your confidence just overall as a man is to make sure that you are living in a purpose right have something that you are striving towards have a career have a a business have a goal have something that makes you feel really confident as a man something that you're happy with like if you're getting up and you're going to work every day and you hate your job it's really hard to be confident about your life and to have a woman that's also going to be confident about your life path as well so have a purpose have something that makes you happy something that pushes you out the bed every morning right continue to learn continue to grow and to gain knowledge on this earth and it'll increase your confidence right but definitely have a purpose, have something that you feel really good about that just makes you shine as a man. That's going to naturally increase your confidence. And naturally a woman is going to see that in you and it's going to be uber attractive to her. Number five, the last thing I'm going to go over with you guys today for the masculinity basics is as a man, when you're operating in your masculine principle, it's really important to understand that a good leader is a good servant. Now, we always talk about submission. We always talk about cooperation from women. And that's absolutely true. It's definitely needed. And it's really important if she's in her feminine state that she identifies that and that she cooperates with that. But also understand that a good leader is not selfish. A good leader is not uh, thoughtless or thankless when it comes to uh, his crew, right? When it comes to his army to his partner, right? A good leader is also a good servant. So if you want to be stronger leaders in your relationships, in your courtships, in your families, in whatever, make sure that you're serving people. Make sure that you are helping others. Make sure that you're serving your community, right? That you're actually active and participating in your community at large, whether that's the Muslim community, the black community, your local community, whatever it is. Make sure that you're helping others. Make sure that you're helping your family. Make sure that you're helping that woman that you're interested in, that you're serving her, that you're not just waiting to be served, right? Because a good leader is going to make sure that the troops are taken care of. They're going to make sure that the people's needs are met. That's part of leadership. Leadership is not just standing in front of people and telling them what to do. That's a manager. That's not necessarily a leader. Those are two totally different things, right? So you want to make sure that you are being a good servant and that you are really, you know, doing courtship, showing up for that person, showing up, letting them know that you're there, that you can help them. And it doesn't mean necessarily financially or anything like that. It could just be with affirmations. It could just be with, you know, um, giving information, you know, assisting them if they need help with something, maybe their family needs help with something, whatever it is. But you want to show those leadership skills um, just in all areas of your life. And that's going to naturally increase your confidence because you're going to be in the action, doing, solution-oriented, assertive role. And that's going to uh, just raise your confidence, make others feel more confident about you. And they're going to identify you as someone who stands out amongst the crowd, someone who's just a very masculine man who's acting out in his manhood and someone that deserves, you know, to have a wonderful feminine woman, wonderful troops behind them that's going to want to support whatever goal it is that they have. So that's it for this week's episode of The Courtship Code and Masculinity Basics. As always, make sure that you like, share, um, comment, uh, you know, favorite this podcast, like us on YouTube, share a comment, follow us on Instagram at blackmuslimsinglesociety.com. If you haven't already gone to blackmuslimsinglesociety.com to put in your profile in our system, book a consultation or enroll in premium matchmaking. We would love, 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 love to have you as a part of our network, inshallah. And as always, I want you guys to have a wonderful week. I look forward to meeting with you next week where we talk about the basics of femininity. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Assalamualaikum. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. 
Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.